Hello, as you can see by this box, I've got for review new released FIO M7. They're new, I, I even don't know how to position this player. Probably it is their second uh, second line of their players. They've, in with this index, they've released some time ago really great M3. Unfortunately, it, uh, that player uh, didn't gather much pop popularity, but actually for me M3 was a really great dub and I still own it and I really enjoy it because it's small but with good sound. Anyway, when they've announced M7, many people were really excited because it was a player with Android and based on the Samsung Exynos chipset and it, uh, it uh, offers a really modern version of uh, Android. Uh, compared with old uh, rock chip based players but uh, unfortunately this player uh, didn't receive uh, Wi-Fi so there is no wireless streaming capabilities but uh, even uh, besides that th this is player is really good replacement of their X3 and X1 so it's a really good replacement of their of both their affordable players price for M7 is uh, $200 and it is uh, one of the best, I say, modern players with uh, Bluetooth uh, with Bluetooth options. Fio really understood that uh, our future is wireless, and they've uh, introduced huge lineup of different Bluetooth products, uh, which they unveil one by one. So they've uh, already released pretty good. BTR1 Bluetooth receiver, they announced new micro BTR or if I am BTR, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. Uh, good uh, MMCX Bluetooth cable RCBT, uh, but all these Bluetooth devices needed something to use as a transport. Of course, you can use your smartphone, for example, but many of us prefer some separate device, and M7 is created to be such a de such device. So let's have a closer look. Box is typical for Fio and it, it's uh, really stylish. So, as you can see, there is uh, this protective uh, sticker, so you can scratch here and check if this uh, is original version. But uh, not many details this time printed on the box. Inside of this box, you will actually, as you expect, you will have another box. This time it's white with red FIO logo. Here is player itself. It exists in four versions. Black one, silver one, blue and uh, if I remember right, red version. So blue and red are limited. I've got this nice silver, silver one because I like this combination of black with silver. Traditionally underneath you will have set of accessories. This player you will have silicon protective case. Small note about separate cable to use uh, M7 as USB transport. Warranty card, the uh, manual in different languages and so on. And also of course it's pretty expectable, but you will have USB-C cable. So yeah, finally Fio moved to the USB-C. So as you can see, the accessory set is, isn't huge, but uh, everything that you can probably expect from the um, affordable player you will have. Design-wise, it's a typical modern player. So it's almost rectangular in shape with just one small each the, for the volume control. The, it's made of aluminium, but it's uh, really lightweight actually. It's, uh, it weighed, it's weighed about 130 grams and it's uh, really impressive how light it is. Also it's uh, pretty small, so here is KN5 Mark II, which is also not big, but uh, in almost all dimensions. Fio is at least few millimeter, millimeters smaller, so it um, and it, that make it a really nice, really uh, compact player. On the back panel, there is small plastic insert for the antenna. 
So here is volume control button. Sorry, not volume, of course, it's uh, track navigation and play pause button. Volume control on off button with uh, LED indicator. And uh, here is output. It can be headphones output or uh, li line out. Micro SD slot card. Uh, this uh, and the uh, USB C port for charging. Player has 2 GB of flash memory. Of course, it's uh, not really big, uh, but I think it's pretty enough to store your collection in MP3, for example, to use on the go. Especially if you have simple aptX headphones, for example, there is no no much sense in storing everything in lossless because uh, aptX is lossy codec, so. You can uh, get use of this 2 gigabytes. It's uh, better, at least better than nothing. Of course, it would be better to have more, but at last we have this. Micro SD slot support all micro SD cards up to 512 gigabytes. So even the biggest cards should be working. And uh, USB C. Port. It supports USB audio output, so you can if you already released special uh, cable to use it uh, for the uh, to use it as uh, digital transport. Also, it can be used for charging and to access uh, internal memory and micro SD card. But for transfer for the Mac OS, you will need the Android file transfer utility. Almost uh, all front screen is occupied with touch screen and. Uh, Actually, touch screen is pretty nice in terms of uh, quality. So even under the bright direct sun, I have bright sun in studio. It uh, remains uh, pretty visible with nice viewing angles with uh, good colors. Of course, it's not superb, but uh, for this price range, you know, it's pretty good screen uh, that I I think it's uh, really enough for this price range. So in terms of build quality what else i forgot to mention i forgot to mention that here used uh, yes i sabered 9018 q2cs digital tonal converter output power is 40 milliwatts for the 32 ohms load and uh, this player has really great work time i just made a single test because i got it really recently and with uh, me audio pinnacle p1 as my typical load uh, on the comfort listening level with flag files 44.1 on this initial firmware version i've got uh, promised uh, uh, 20 hours of work time i think i will have even more because i uh, because the battery will settle and will work better, I suppose. And few stated that it will give you like 26 hours of wireless playback. I didn't test it, but I think these numbers are really precise because they re they tell you the test conditions, so it's easy to check, and so I think they telling the truth. Also, it's a pretty effective in standby mode. It can be in standby. Few stated. It can be instant buy for 40 days. I haven't checked this, but it's a pretty efficient instant buy actually. So, in terms of build quality, in terms of design, I really like this player. Underneath of this player's firmware is lies Android operation system, but actually you won't get much use of it because you are limited to these six icons and to these six applications. On the first startup, player will ask you about your preferred language and about your location to adjust FM radio, but uh, I've already passed this uh, initial screen, so I won't show it to you, but actually it's just two selections, so just believe me. So let's probably get from in backwards direction, so settings, sorry I miss it, so Bluetooth, it's pretty typical, turn on, turn off, scan for devices and connect here, audio, so you can select headphone out or to line out, wireless playback quality you can select one of the options, channel balance and uh, should it uh, understand in line remote. FM radio, here you select region, what else, key lock settings I just, uh, so on the keylock settings you can select which buttons will be available when the screen is turned off. 
general settings it is system settings about device, power of timers, brightness level, it's maximum brightness level, but it's uh, pretty visible. So wallpaper you can select, sleep timer, uh, date and time, it has built-in clock, language and input and screen lock you can select also here. And factory data, data reset, it's not much useful, I think. So they implemented two interesting gestures, swipe from bottom to top on the left side, it is uh, like going back, and swipe on the right side will bring you to this uh, main, main menu, quickly bring you. So technical support, it's typical, contact us, frequency asked questions, quick start guide, firmware update, so it's uh, typical. Gallery will show you media. In my case, it's uh, album covers. So, not sure why it can be used. Actually, the device itself is pretty normal in terms of speed. As you can see, there is no notice, big noticeable legs. Of course, uh, pictures aren't loading instantly, but uh, pretty nice, I'd say. So, file manager, here you can browse your card or built-in memory, there are typical operations with files, so you can copy, move, delete and so on. I think it's uh, pretty convenient, this basic file manipulation uh, routines. So, FM radio. As you can probably expect, it won't work without plugging headphones, because it uses headphone cable as, uh, as antenna. So, on the first start it will scan radio stations near you, and you can manually select frequency or just switch between uh, different stations. And I can say that uh, radio quality is uh, pretty nice. It's not super sensitive, but it's nice when you are in the street, uh, when you are in the city, when there are some few powerful ra radio stations near you, it's pretty normally working, so you can enjoy your favorite FM stations. But of course, uh, the main and the most important probably part, it's uh, Fio Music, it is our favorite, our familiar player that Fio introduced recently version for Android they've released. It uh, exists for the iOS and it's uh, used for this player and for all other Fio players with Android operation system. I think Fio will unify all the players in the future. So here is recently played, most played and recently added tracks, all songs, artist, album, folder, genre and playlist. So everything that you can expect here. And uh, what is what I like here, for example, if you select genre, and you select blues, so you can get all songs and you can get albums. So it's nice grouping. So here is bulk management. You can choose here different sort options. So everything that you can probably expect. There are some settings. Off timer for the music app, scan for new songs, resume, should it remember position or just like song, gay plus playback, play through folders, auto update, fixed volume settings if they need it, DSD over PCM, uh, you can select black or white interface, which one you like more, and uh, should it show album art on the lock screen. In, in big, so let's let's turn it on, for I just show it to you. So when it starts playback, on the lock screen you will have this big uh, album art if you need it. So you, here you can add to the favorites, you can control it, so everything that you can also expect. Actually, to, to be honest, I don't I don't like the idea of this lock screen because when I unlock my player, I just want to get straight to my music. Here, also everything that you can probably expect. Additional information you can see: play order, 
add, add to favorites, uh, delete additional track info, playlists, equalizer if you have if you'd like to have one with different presets if necessary so but i just prefer to keep it off as usual so interface is pretty nice pretty responsive no big issues one uh, actually issue that i found and uh, it's almost not visible on the on the video it's a bit wiggling scrolling when you just scroll it it's a bit, bit this list looks a bit wiggling but i can't call it a big you know a, a big issue with usability besides that i've got almost zero legs and zero issues but i usually i'm not a, you know i'm not a big fan of some really high resolution files I ha i've got few high res files and few dsd tracks to check but i usually use only 44 kilohertz 16 bit flex so it's my main experience but and it's actually forgot to mention it supports up to 192 kilohertz and uh, I don't remember, probably 24 bits or 16 bits, uh, I don't remember, I will find out when I will be fi finalizing this video and I will put uh, some title here, so I will tell you it for sure. And uh, it supports DSD, so pretty universal in terms of uh, file formats, it uh, doesn't support this ultra high res formats, but I think it's pretty enough for the portable player and for the player that costs $200. So pretty nice firmware, pretty convenient and I'd say pretty mature for the first version. But probably will have more updates with more features and with some more improvements in the future. But of course the most interesting thing about this player is uh, the sound. Reading the specs I was afraid that uh, its output power won't be enough. But actually with almost any IEMs uh, it's uh, more than enough, uh, even you will have some extra useless power. For example, with Andromeda's uh, on the 14 or 15, uh, on the volume set to 15, it's uh, just my comfortable level. With IMR R1, which are tougher, it, I set volume about uh, 20. So, as you can see, it's uh, pretty enough for waste majority of situations. Of course, it won't drive, I don't know, some. Uh, tough uh, full-size headphones, some 300 uh, ohm uh, headphones and some uh, power hungry kings, but even for example with full-size headphones like Meze, its power is more than enough to drive them properly. By the way, I have looked at the specs and it supports uh, resolutions up to 192 kHz and 24 bits, so that's the precise fingers. So, so uh, as for sound, actually for this price range it's uh, normal, it's good, but uh, it's not, you know, it's not some giant killer in, 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 and it's not sound like, you know, to kill anything under $500 and so on. Just for its price and for its size it's normal. It has uh, a bit accented lower frequencies uh, with uh, this uh, hint of added warmth, I think Fio created this dub as uh, some kind of uh, opposite to their uh, X3 third generation. X3 third generation is a bit on brighter side and natural, while this one is a bit warmer and uh, it has uh, accented lows. Uh, uh, of course, lows aren't, aren't uh, most resolving here and actually all frequencies aren't more, most resolving here, but the uh, resolution is uh, pretty nice. They have normal depths, not super deep, but uh, depth is, I'd say, normal. It has good weight uh, and a uh, good foundation. Meats are emotional, on the emotional side, without uh, attempts to sound too clinical, without attempts to uh, play some, you know, some audiophilic sound with super resolution and micro nuances, micro details. No, it's not about this player. It's a bit on the warmer and a bit on more, more enjoyable side. It's, you know, like uh, something in between, you know, Fio X5 
uh, third generation and probably I'd say few x3 uh, second generation. So a bit of added emotions, a bit of added accent, accents on the lower frequencies. Imaginary stage is average both in width and in depth, but it's not sound too too thin, too, too narrow, too too congested. So I'd say for this price range again it's normal. Treble also a bit accented, uh, it has normal resolution, but att attacks and decays are simplified and uh, of course they don't have layering, but actually for layering you will need some much more expensive player. So I don't want to say that it is bad player, I think for this price range it's really nice, it's lively, it's enjoyable, it's emotional, I'm just comparing with you with uh, some, you know, more expensive players. Oh, just take a look how nice it looks, uh, white album cover and the uh, white, uh, white control panel just matching each other, so here it looks really nicely. So, for this price range it's a pretty enjoyable dub and uh, it's uh, really good to listen on the street, because you know, as I've said many times in previous reviews, on the street uh, the low frequencies suffer the most in, of all the frequency spectrum, so a, a bit of added lows are a good idea for the street wearing to compensate the lower frequencies uh, uh, loss due to external noise. Speaking about comparisons, just few brief, so what we have in this price range, few x3 third generation, it's, you know, like, um, op as I've said, opposite, few x3 is brighter, more resolving, and but sometimes it sounds sharper, while this one add, add, adding a bit more emotions and a bit on darker side. K and N5, uh, sorry, N3 is probably uh, reminds this player a little bit, it also has accent on lower frequencies, but uh, Fuse M7 is a bit more resolving, I think it's uh, due to usage of ESS Sabre 9018. Also pretty close in price range, it's, uh, it's what, sorry, forgot, forgotten the name of that company, X-Duo X20, X-Duo X20 is also has a similar signature, but X20 has more rolled off treble, so it's it's a bit more mid-centric, and it has a more linear lower frequency, so it, it's more linear on the low and on the mids, and a bit more resolving, but treble is more rolled off in the X20. So here is probably the closest rivals, and uh, here is few M7. It has all necessary Bluetooth codecs, it can be used as a transport for the different amplifiers that FIO create. Really good uh, stack with uh, FIO Q5, for example, and uh, it's pre it has pretty normal sound in uh, headphones, that is uh, really enjoyable. It's not super universal, not some giant killer, but for this price range, oh, forgot to mention another competitor in this price range, it's uh, Sony A35 and A45 series. To be honest, I really don't like Sony players. They are, you know, they making me really sad because they are built perfectly. They have great uh, UI, great firmware, uh, nice features, but they sound absolutely, to me, they sound absolutely lifeless, absolutely flat, absolutely not engaging. You know, it's just like you put some cotton into your ears. Uh, I don't. I can't express how I was disappointed when I first uh, heard that dub. So I can say that it's even not comparable in terms of sound with uh, with uh, Fio's dub. So Fio created a pretty interesting device. Of course, they could they could make it a killer. They will just need to add, you know, Wi-Fi and uh, streaming applications, but uh, they didn't make this. I I don't know about the reasons, probably to avoid 
uh, Wi-Fi interference, maybe not to pay additional licenses, maybe due to other reason, maybe they are preparing another more expensive flagship model in the, in the M lineup. But actually, for this $200 as a replace as a replacement to, for the Fio X3 third generation, and uh, for the player in $200 range, I'd say that it, it's a really nice competitor to use on the go when you want to listen to some music or maybe wired maybe wireless and the m7 offers everything that you will need reliable aluminium body long work time uh, support of all modern formats pretty normal firmware good sound thank you for attention